How's it going guys and welcome to another 2020 cup or bust video In this one we're trying to rebuild the Arizona Coyotes If you missed the last video we did the Anaheim Ducks As you can see here I've actually added some custom players just to make it a bit more authentic uh, We have Brady Kachuk here for the 2018 draft Cole Caulfield in the 2019 draft uh, Kelma Carr is on the Avalanche, Middlestat on the Sabres And then Tolvin in here on the Predators Also added Kovalchuk as a free agent as he will be this summer in 2018 uh, Farabee here is also in the 18 draft. Uh, Jack Hughes should be going first overall in 2019. So I've actually boosted him from a 76 to a 78. As for some reason, he doesn't grow at all um, in the seasons we simulate. But Kachuk does and some other players do. So he'll be, you know, worthy of that first overall pick, hopefully. Uh, Wallstrom here is also in the 18 draft. Same with Quinton Hughes. Uh, bumped him up a bit as well. He was a 68. Now a 70. I feel like he should be able to make the team... Uh, by like 2020. And like I was saying guys, we're doing the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, right now they're actually tied for the lowest overall in the Pacific, along with the Vancouver Canucks and the Vegas Golden Knights. So my plan for them basically is to suck the first two years as much as possible, get as many high picks as possible, and then that third year go all out. Hopefully our picks are ready to make the team, get some big free agent signings, our other players are ready to go, and we can somehow go from like one of the worst teams in the league to winning the Stanley Cup. Um, you know over the summer basically and like I was saying in the last video We're gonna have something on the line So if we are unable to win the Stanley Cup we have to quick sell everything from a choice pack uh, It's one of the ones that have like the 287 pluses in them So um, hopefully we can pull this out and win the cup and actually keep that pack We have the full sim game style injuries are off 20 minute periods uh, Computer trades obviously on so difficulty superstar. I'm not sure if that matters or not Draft pick ownership authentic, sire cup on, trade difficulty hard. And on top of those settings, I actually have my own set of rules just to make the franchise mode a bit more difficult and hopefully uh, more realistic as well. Uh, the first one, unlimited free agent signings. This is just to give us more creative freedom basically over the summer. Uh, next, we have max five trades per year. I feel like that's, you know, a pretty good number. Uh, CPU offers, though, are a bonus. They do not count. Uh, usually, the CPU offers are pretty bad, but if they actually do offer us a good one that we want to accept, it's on top of the five. Uh, cannot trade picks past 2020, so... You know, we can't be trading 2022 first round picks and kind of boosting our team that way. And then finally, keep at least four picks per draft. So um, even in, you know, drafts that we're not going to be involved in, like the 2020 draft, we still need at least four picks. As I think, you know, a reasonable GM would keep at least four picks in the draft uh, to not completely destroy the team's future. And right here's a look at the assets we have to work with to try and build Arizona into a cup contending team in two years, essentially. So uh, four players here with a lot of value, Keller, Chitrin, Strom, and Ekman Larson. I feel like the only one I might trade is Strom if I feel like he's not growing. Try and get a like better, younger center for him. Uh, Keller, Chitrin, Ekman, Larson, I'll be keeping all three of them. Then we actually have a ton of players here with a decent amount of value. Um, probably will hold on to most of them, see how they grow. And, you know, basically if I don't think they're going to be a part of the team in that third year, I'll trade them beforehand. And if they are, obviously we're going to try and keep them. Uh, the other guys, most of them are veterans, we'll try to move out. Demers may or may not keep. Goligoski, I'll definitely trade. 32, making 5.6 or 4 years. Uh, rather that contract gone. The rest of the guys basically have no value. On regards to our goalie situation, we have two, I don't know what you'd call them, like low-end starters, high-end backups in Ranta and Kemper. Uh, so for now, I'll probably just roll with them. Uh, usually there's a decent free agent goalie available at least one of the years, so we could hope for that or trade for a goalie worst case scenario in that third year. Plus we have no goalie prospects, so a free agent signing or a trade is basically necessary uh, to fix that. And then in terms of draft picks, this year is really not that great. Don't have a fifth round pick. Our second's Minnesota, so even if we do really bad, it's Minnesota's second. So basically relying on our first round pick and hopefully we can get another pick. And then 2019 is actually pretty solid. We have all of our picks plus an extra third there from Calgary and an extra six there from the Penguins. So um, decent amount of stuff to work with. Definitely not ideal though for a rebuilder. Going to be tough, but I think we can pull this off. So like I was saying guys, I want to move on from Goligoski's contract. Four years left at 5.6. He's 82 overall. Uh, does not make sense to keep him around. Columbus has Abramov on the block right now. 19, 64 overall, low top six. He could be good enough to help our team in a couple years, especially if he has like a good season in the juniors, then the AHL. Uh, value's basically equal. Uh, looks to be actually perfectly equal. They want Goligoski, don't want Abramov. This should go through, and it does. So that's a huge trade. We lose like that contract I didn't want, plus get a good prospect. I like that a lot. Trying to make another trade here, guys. This is actually a bit of a blockbuster. Trying to get Dylan Larkin from the Red Wings. Uh, 21 years old, 84 overall, low leap potential. Considered a second line forward. He usually grows pretty good in this game. Offering them Stefan. Uh, he's already the same rating. Uh, considered a first line forward, though. He's older, much older, 27. Uh, so he's basically not going to grow anymore while Larkin will. Plus, he's making a lot of money there. 6.7 for an 84 is pretty like expensive. I'd say it's too much. Um, so along with him offering Westerlin. 
Decent prospect, nothing crazy though. And then Kemper here, who's just our backup. Detroit also wants, as I guess, you know, they trade away Mrazic. They want a backup to replace him. So in this trade, again, we get rid of a... Not a terrible contract, but definitely not a great contract. Get a same, like, same rated player who's younger, going to grow. Um, and again, save money, get a better younger player. I feel like it's a very good trade if it goes through. Uh, the value's on our side by quite a bit. We'll see what Detroit says here. Trade's going to be accepted. We're calling up Hill, so that's an awesome trade. I didn't think that was actually going to go through. As you can see here, too, we have almost $30 million in salary cap space. Um, absolutely ridiculous. One thing I wanted to show you guys, totally forgot. We do have that one bad contract still. I'm um, in David Bolin. Now, with him, 31, 75, 5.6 million for two years. No team's going to take him unless we, like, pay them to take him. So, we might as well just keep him on the team, especially since we have so much salary cap. But it actually works out well. He's got two years left. So, when we're ready to compete in year three, he'll be off the books. We can use that money on a big free agent signing. Uh, so, so far, two solid trades. And I think maybe we'll try and sign some free agents here. Then, start the season sim. Actually, guys, I'm going to try and make one more trade here. Getting rid of our worst contracts. Arizona actually has a lot uh, like these two guys here, almost 30, they're still in their low 70s. They're not making anything, it's just I'd rather not even have that contract. Like, I'd rather just have an empty spot for trades, free agent signings, whatever. Same goes for Archie Ball there, this male guy. Uh, Smerik's got medium 7th D, he's got the best potential of them all. Uh, but still, like, not really good enough to keep. So, these five players, I'm going to try and give them all to Washington. Uh, they have the contract spots, I'll honestly take back anything. Um, let's see, they don't even have, or I'm in the wrong spot there, my bad. Um, we'll try and get a 6th, I won't, we won't get a 4th, but, um, 7th, maybe we can get a 6th instead of a 7th. And yeah, they take it, so, 6th round pick there, plus we cleared some cap. The only bad thing is, that's our 3rd trade, so we can only make 2 now, uh, for the rest of the season. And now that we have those extra roster spots, we're gonna try and sign a few free agents here. Uh, Kovachuk, for sure, I'd love just to flip at the deadline. Uh, we could probably get a 1st round pick for him if he plays well, so... Um, we have more than enough, you know, money for this year. Might as well overpay everybody. Give them four million for one year. Hopefully, it's enough. Even though we're a bad team, that he'll say yes. And you know, we, we'll tell him that we'll flip him at the deadline. I'm wondering if Tulusti or Hudler would be worth signing to flip. I mean, worst case, we can get a late pick for them. You know what? I think I'm gonna try and sign both of them. And like I said, maybe we can package them, get like a third round pick or something at the deadline. And the worst case, we get nothing for them. But uh, doesn't really matter. In terms of potential, too, we have Samuelson here. Uh, he's 23, 71 overall, which is okay. Uh, like, for a one-year deal, he'll definitely get some playtime in the AHL. So, hopefully, you know, he'll get better. And then for goalies, usually I sign Godla, but he didn't really grow at all last year. I saw this guy down here, Weitzman. Uh, he's a year younger, three overall higher. Slightly worse potential there, low backup. But if we make him the AHL starter, maybe he somehow gets good. So, We'll take a chance on him. So Samuelson actually rejected our offer. He signed with the Avs instead. Uh, didn't say any other teams were interested in him at the time, but I guess Colorado was. I honestly don't think he was worth more than the minimum anyway. Uh, Hudler accepted our offer though, so that's good. Same with Tulusti and Kolbachuk. So there we go, and that back of goalie. So uh, the one I cared about the least didn't accept, so not a big deal at all. And after those signings, here's what the team's looking like. So the first line there, we have Kolbachuk, Larkin, and Keller. Really hoping that can be a great first line. Keller and Larkin grow a bunch in overall. Uh, Kolbachuk we can trade for a first to the deadline. Just thinking about that Detroit trade again. Like, I really hope Detroit would never do that with Larkin. I don't think they would, though. Uh, second line here, we have Panic, Dvorak, and Domi. So a decent second line. Uh, Panic will definitely try and trade. Dvorak and Domi I'd like to see grow. Third line there, Toulouse, Richardson, Hudler. Um, all expendable. Fourth line, Fisher, he'll probably stick around with the team. Um, like Ideally, he ends up being a decent third liner. Worst case, I think he'll be like a solid fourth liner for us. He's already on the fourth line, but obviously, I'd prefer him to be like an 80. Uh, then Bull in there and Martinuk just kind of filling the holes there on the fourth line. Defense here, we have Ekman Larson and Jarmelson on the top pair. Demers and Chitrin on the second, and then Connaughton and Shed on the third. Really hoping Chitrin can grow a bunch for us. That would be awesome to have like both him and Ekman Larson on the top pair, even if we can get in another really good defenseman, whether it's Down or somebody else. Uh, you know, we just have two guys all ready to build around. And then in goal, of course, Ranta there's our starter. Backup, we have this Hill guy, 68 overall. So I'm really hoping our uh, assistant coach or whoever gives him a bunch of games. Uh, Ranta, I'm not sure what his endurance is, or if that's even a stat. 85 endurance. So I mean, he's not going to start you know, a crazy amount of games, probably like 60 max. So hopefully having Hill in there for like 20 games can really give us a bunch of losses and kind of, you know, tank, I guess, try and get that first round pick as high as possible. Um, AHL here, obviously we have that guy we just signed as our starter. He's actually our best goalie prospect now, which is pretty sad for Arizona. Uh, first line in the AHL, they have Kroos and Strom, obviously really want them to grow a bunch. After that, you got Doff in there and that's about it. There's nothing else to look forward to for forwards or even defensemen. So it's really crazy to me just 
how bad Arizona's prospect pool is. I guess there are a lot of prospects already in the NHL for them, but you'd think, you know, for how long they've been rebuilding, they'd be better than this. Hopefully, uh, we can, you know, turn this ship around fast and uh, win that cup by 2020. Uh, we'll start simming now and uh, see how it goes. So right now we're at the end of November. The Devils just offered me Grabner for a couple thirds. Obviously, I'm going to decline rebuilding. But as you can see, we're actually winning right now somehow. 14-7-2. The Sharks are 4-12-4. And, and Edmonton here wants to give me Lucic now for a second and third. I have no idea how this team is doing so well. Like, the top six of the first line's a good second line. After that, like, every line's pretty bad. The defense has no depth. The goalies are bad. I don't know what's happening. Obviously, do not want Lucic's contract, especially for giving up picks. But if this team keeps winning, it's really going to like mess up my plan. Kind of like Vegas, how they're winning this year. Hopefully, we can start losing. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Just got another trade offer. This one's pretty interesting. Coming from the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, they want to give me Perron for Demers and a third. Now, obviously, I'd rather keep the third. Uh, Perron, though, does expire at the end of this year, so we could flip him at the deadline. And Demarius is pretty overpaid for an A2 overall defenseman at $5 million, but don't want to give up the pick, and I'd rather probably trade Demarius four picks than Perron. Uh, so I think I'm going to say no here. After I got that trade-off from Vegas, I decided to check my lines. Uh, I realized I forgot to put Perlini in the starting lineup, so he's now third line left wing. Uh, Tulusi's on the fourth line left wing. Also, Cousins here is fourth line center uh, before Boland was there, and uh, Martinuk was in Perlini's spot, or actually he was in where Tulusi is now. So hopefully... Uh, Perlini here, this will help him grow a bit. He did miss out, I guess, like 30 games or something. Um, I think that's how many we played, but I think that's still fine. He's playing on the third line. He should uh, grow now. We're now a few days away from the deadline. Rangers just offered me Zuccarello for two seconds and Walter Holm, who's a top nine forward potential prospect, obviously not giving up my seconds. Uh, Zuccarello, though, is a good player. I feel like I could probably get a first rounder for him, but um, two seconds is basically worth a first rounder anyway. So I'm going to say no to that. Um, I don't know why I'm getting offered that. We're almost 500 now. We've started losing a bit more since I made that goalie change. Um, as you can see, we are 30, 27, and 5 here at the deadline. We did lose like five games in a row there at some point, but really not losing as much as I'd like to be. AHL team is actually worse than the NHL team, which is, I guess actually no, that AHL team was pretty terrible. Uh, so right now we are fifth place in the Pacific, do not have a wild card spot. Uh, three points though outside of like the playoffs so if we wanted to we could easily make it but I feel like there's no way this team wins a Stanley Cup. Uh, Oliver Eckland Larson there is our leading scorer 51 points 62 games so he's killing it. I'm uh, gonna try and flip Kolvachuk now for a first round pick and maybe Demers with like something else for a second. Um, just try and get something back for our assets and also make our team worse and hopefully drop in the standings. As I was looking through the trading block, I noticed a few players were missing from certain teams, and as you can see here, a couple huge blockbuster trades went down. Detroit traded Anthony Mantha along with David Booth, the Chicago Blackhawks for a first in 2018, that's Nationals pick, and a first in 2019. I can't believe that, like, you'd think Larkin and Mantha would be the two Red Wings Detroit never trades, and both have already been traded this season. Uh, definitely, like, that's, you know, only happening in franchise mode, not real life. Um, also, another big trade here, Toronto traded two first-round picks for both James Neal and Jason Garrison. So, I mean, uh, some first-round picks are going all over the place. Detroit now has three. Uh, they also have Vegas Golden Knights from the Tatar trade, uh, which is worth a ton, as Vegas is, like, one of the worst teams right now. Yeah, they're at the bottom of the Pacific, so... Uh, gonna be interesting to see what we can get here. I'm hoping we can also land a first round pick. All right guys, so right now we're trying to trade Kovalchuk to the Wild for a first round pick, retaining 50%. Obviously we signed him for free. If we can get a first rounder out of it, that would be awesome. Even if it's a late first rounder, they are a playoff team. Let's see what they say. And trade is accepted. That's awesome. All right, guys. So we're now trying to get a trade with Columbus. Uh, get their first round pick in this year's draft. Taking back these two here just for the roster spot. Uh, same with the goalie. He's really not that great. Uh, 23, 74 overall probably won't get good enough um, anytime soon or even before he stops growing. Uh, they want both Hudler and Tulusti help out probably their bottom six. Also offering Ranta just because he has decent value. One year left. I don't think I'll resign him. Plus train him away should make us lose a bunch more games. Finish lower in the standings. I better shot the first overall pick. Uh, Schnarr here is actually a decent unsigned prospect. Medium top nine potential but medium top nine becomes pretty common after the first year so rather get something for him now uh, before it's like worth less. Uh, value is actually on our side. They don't want the first. They don't want that goalie. We'll see what they say. Trades accepted because we're calling up Stroman, uh, whatever his name is. Can't pronounce it. I like that a lot. So after those trades, here's a look at our picks for this year's drafts. We have three firsts. Hopefully ours is like first overall, at least top five. And then the other two we get lucky with. 
a second, a third, a fourth, two six, and a seventh. So not bad at all. Uh, definitely like, you know, our current situation. So after trading away a bunch of players with the deadline, here's an updated look at the roster. Uh, we have Keller, Larkin, Domi on the first line. Larkin's actually an 86 now, so really liking that trade uh, that we made. Second line here is Panic, Strom, and Kraus. So Kraus and Strom actually get upgraded from the first line AHL to the second line NHL. Uh, Perlini, Dvorak, and Fisher on the third. And then Martinuk, Richardson, and Cousin on the fourth. Uh, defense the exact same. And then goalie here. We have Merzlikens as our starter with Hill backing him up. So hopefully we lose a bunch of games here to end up the season, but still get a bunch of growth from our players. Uh, that'd be perfect. All right, guys. So I don't know what's up with this team, but I try and make them lose and they still win. As you can see here, finish with a record of 42, 32, and 8. Uh, so that means that they're actually going to have like 92 points. Maybe a wild card team. Probably not, though. Um, it's so strange. Like, so the deadline was... Where was the deadline? The 27th. We lost a couple games there. And then we actually went on a winning streak here. How many games do we win in a row? One, two, that's six. Uh, six straight wins. Like, I guess they didn't get the memo about losing. AHL team there is really bad, though. Uh, so we'll see here if we're in the playoffs or not. Um, if we are, I guess it's kind of okay. We are in the playoffs. I can't believe that. So, I mean... If this team somehow wins the Stanley Cup first year, like, that would be crazy because we we're trading away stuff. I really don't think it happens. Our division, though, is so bad. Edmonton there in first with only 96 points. Calgary second, 95. And we got third with 92 after trading away stuff. I'm curious if Columbus and Minnesota both made it. Uh, so Minnesota there is in the playoffs, so they're not a lottery pick. And Columbus also made it. Okay, so we don't have a lottery pick, but we do have three firsts. So maybe we can trade up into, like, a top five. Um, I don't know what happened, like, Larkin here went off, 70 points, 82 games, I tried to make us miss, I traded away so much, I don't get it, we have a 74 as our starter, um, Larkin though is playing great, so I mean, that's good for the future, Ekman Larson as well, 64 points there, plus 5, um, Keller there, 58 points, surprised he hasn't grown yet, Dvorak, Domi's looking good, Panic, maybe even calling up Strom, actually, you know, he filled in there well, Perlini, 22 and 39 is also pretty small, uh, solid, how is Strom doing? 10 and 20, so that's not bad. On pace for like a 40-point season. Kroos there's got 5. Let's see how our goalie is doing. Uh, so Hill's 9 and 12. Uh, Merzlikin, though, 9 and 5. Somehow has a winning record as a 74 goalie. Like, that makes no sense to me. And here's a look at the leading scores for the entire league. Tarasenko put up 96 points. Hall there with 93. Uh, same with McDavid, actually. Crosby, of course. So, you know, the usual suspects up here. Shifley and Wheeler both. Shen, McKinnon there, obviously having a great year. Uh, Panarin, Malkin, Kessel, Ovechkin, how many goals? Yeah, 49, so no 50 goals for Ovechkin. Holo actually won the Maurice Richard there, 52 goals, that's insane. Um, Hischer also had a very good year, 81 points, Kane was 79. So, I don't know what happened, guys. Like, I traded away as much as I possibly could. I mean, you see what the team looked like, and somehow they still won games. So, I mean, it is what it is. Somehow this team makes the playoffs, but the Anaheim Ducks in the first year did not with that stack team. That's what's so strange about franchise mode. And you never know. If we can win the cup here, that'd be hilarious. It's not going to happen, though. So it's really just going to make the rebuild tougher, but that's okay. So we'll see who we're matched up with here in the first round. So in the first round, we're matched up with the Calgary Flames. Look at their ratings. 90, 93, 89. We have 89, 92, and 76. Like, I still do not get it. I mean, we probably have the most, like, picks, though, of any team that made the playoffs, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, so look at the Flames lineup here. It'll probably be more or less the same as we are in year one. And right there is another refresher of our lineup. Somehow a playoff team. I guess Larkin's just carrying this team, which I love. Uh, so yeah, the first line's the same. Second line, they still have Yager because um, they didn't take him off. So yeah, it does not look like the Flames have changed at all. Or actually, did they add uh, Prout there? Uh, oh no, I think they already had him actually. So yeah, it doesn't look like the Flames made any changes. So we are probably going to get destroyed here in the first round, but you never know with this game. We're just going to send the whole round here. So first game's a 4-2 loss, 4-1 loss. 3-2 OT win, 3-2 OT loss, there we go. So we did get one playoff win at least, but lost in five. Again, it would have been so much better if we just missed and had at least some chance at the lottery, but what are you going to do? And the lottery results just came in, guys. San Jose with the first overall pick, Dallas second, Carolina third. That's like an interesting group of names you don't usually see at the top of the draft. Uh, the Rangers there actually got fifth via Boston, Detroit sixth via Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, they have another pick via Nashville that was in the lottery. So like I was saying, Detroit really lucked out there with their three first rounders. So before we get to the draft, guys, we're going to show you the awards for this year. As you can see there, the Lightning are the 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Very good chance that actually happens this year. And then Ekman Larson actually had seven points in five games for us. So he had a very good playoff. 
Uh, we'll see what happened with the rest of the awards here. President's Trophy was the Devils, and then Tampa Bay beat Winnipeg. Winnipeg, I think, won the Cup two or three years in our Ducks sim, so, I mean, both those teams are just so stacked in this. Uh, Art Ross, of course, Tarasenko. He also got the Hart. Petrangelo with the James Norris, McDavid, Lady Bing, and the Calder. Um, I'm not sure how that works, but um, this is McDavid's third year, so I think the, I think something messed up there. Uh, Conn Smythe, Vasilevsky, Jimmy Howard with the Vesna. That's that is insane. This is such a cr Vesna goes to Howard. McDavid wins this uh, Calder in his third year, and then we made the playoffs somehow with our team. Like what a strange year. Uh, Schneider with the William M Jennings. Stahl with the Masterson, Taze with the Selkie, Tarasenko, Ted Lindsay, and then Hall with the Maurice Richard. Um, so very interesting. We'll take a quick look at the AHL awards. Tolvin in here cleaning. Tolvin in just cleaned up. Jeez, he had uh, what is that? Five awards. A couple of familiar faces though. Lack there won the MVP of the playoffs. McLenny won the best goalie MVP of the uh, season. So what did Tolvin in win? He won the Rookie of the Year, uh, most goals. MVP of the season and just most points in the season, I think. So, wow, Tolvanen is going to be pretty good for the Predators, I think. All right, guys, so this is kind of crazy. San Jose actually has the first overall pick on the block. Uh, they're only one of two teams that has a top 10 pick that's on the block. Uh, the other one's LA, who has the 10th pick. So, might as well go all out here for that first overall. Try and get Dallin. Offering them our 18th pick, along with the Columbus 24th pick. Uh, Jarmelson here is solid, but he's getting older. I feel like we could find a guy similar to him in free agency this summer and next. Uh, Joseph here is actually a solid prospect. I don't know if he'll be good enough, though, to help our team in year three. Uh, and he's got a decent amount of value. And then Merzlikin here was just like an add-on. They want him, though. And because he's a goalie, it doesn't actually affect their like skater spots, which is full. So um, we will see what they say. If this goes through, that would be amazing. Here we go. Trade accepted. There we go. I can't believe it actually went through. Plus, we still have pick number like 29 or something from Minnesota. So first overall, obviously, we are taking Dallin, the franchise potential. Um, like he's like him, Ekman Larson, Chitrin. Our defense is stacked. Plus, we already have a bunch of good young forwards. Uh, obviously, we could take Svechnikov, who gets really good, really quick. Usually, like a mid 80 by year two. Same with Sedina. Uh, Kachuk was like an 84 last time, I think. Hughes is now a 70, so he'd be like. Low 80, you got Valino, like there's a ton of good players here, but we are taking Rasmus Dallin, the obvious pick, 78 medium franchise, that's awesome. Now we're going to pick number 29, before I make this pick, I forgot to show you guys the rest of the first round, uh, Montreal getting a pretty good steal there, a medium league goalie at number 28, uh, we'll see who else kind of got picked here, if any steals happened, uh, what was our pick, our pick was number 24, so San Jose got Sutter, high top 9, that's not great. Um, and then they also got Thomas there, medium top six. Bouchard, high top four, is probably the better pick that they missed out on. Chicago got him. Uh, Wu was who he dropped in the last year's draft with Anaheim. Um, looks like, where did the elites end, I'm wondering. Uh, top six, so medium elite there, Merkley at eight. Uh, Bockvist at seven, 69. Valino, Zadina, Kachuk. Hughes actually went three, wow. I'm um, surprised. Kachuk was a 77 out of the draft. Same as Svechnikov. Zadina there at 5. Uh, so, I mean, medium elites all the way to number 8. I don't think there's any other elites that are, like, real players I know of. So, we're probably going to have to get lucky here, either with a, you know, user-created skater, maybe a goalie. There's always, like, a few medium elite goalies they put into the draft. Actually, guys, I'm going to go with Noah Dobson here with my second first-round pick. I think he has top 4 potential. I don't remember if it's, like, low, medium, whatever. Uh, so, we'll just go with the safe pick. Medium top four, yeah. So for pick number 29, I think that's pretty solid. And Colorado just offered me Colin Wilson for a second round pick. I'm going to decline that. Probably get better value. Um, let's see. Okay, so Buffalo wants to give me Ocposo for two seconds. I mean, that's not that bad depending on Ocposo's overall because we can take that salary. 84, 6 million. That is, that's a bit much. I think I'd rather keep the two seconds. I can probably get two players I could use uh, for more trade value. And then Nielsen here from Vancouver for two-thirds. Again, going to decline that. Uh, so our pick actually isn't until 29 because uh, Minnesota did so well. So let's see. For this next pick, I think I'm going to go with a goalie. Uh, I'm trying to decide between Rodriguez and Gravel. I know one of them for sure has starter potential. They honestly might both have starter potential. Um, so I'm just going to go with Gravel here. And he does have medium starter. Okay, that's good. As you guys can see here, Rodriguez actually got taken with the next pick by the Jets. Same potential, but one overall higher. Um, and also, I noticed, too, in the second round, there was a huge steal by the St. Louis Blues. This Benson guy, medium elite, pick number 22 in the second round. Like, that's insane value. So, uh, our next pick here is round three. Doesn't look like any more steals have been had. I'm actually trying to remember uh, which our pick was. Caught there, actually, low top six is pretty solid. 
um, in the third round. So hopefully we can land another good pick. This Robertson guy here has exact top six, even if it's low top six. Um, it's actually medium top six. So for the third round, that's pretty solid. Our next pick's in the fourth round. Now right here's Noel. He's got elite potential according to our scouts. I know he doesn't. I do think though he's got, like it might be low top six. I don't remember. Um, Addison actually I know has decent potential as well. I think it's like low top four. Um, okay, we'll take Noel though, and then maybe try and trade up, get Addison. He does have low top six. Okay, that's solid. So we're now picking the sixth round, guys. Forgot I didn't have a fifth round pick. Also decided it probably wasn't worth it to trade up and get Addison, as I would only leave us with three trades for the rest of the year, which isn't a lot. So I'm thinking probably going to go with Clayton here. Medium top four, according to our scouts. Hopefully they're right on him. And medium seventh, they were wrong. We actually have two sixth round picks here, so... Maybe we can hit the next one. Medium seventh is basically just like an add-on to try and push our trade over the edge. Um, Yule here, top nine. I mean, that's decent for a sixth. If he is that. Medium bottom six, okay. And our last pick of the draft here, pick number 18 in round seven. Noticing some big trades there in the message center. Calgary got Hoffman. Uh, Anaheim got Tanev. Buff or sorry, Nashville gets Ock Poso from Buffalo. So uh, some teams are making some moves. Love seeing that. Um, this pick here... Maybe we actually do go with the goalie. The goalies probably have a better chance to be good than the other guys. Winkquist, medium fringe, that's actually very good for a 7th round pick. So now we're at the re-sign phase. I think this is the most cap space I've ever had after the first year. We have just under 37 million. Also, we have a ton of contract spots. I just released like 10 guys at an AHL potential and we're like too old, never going to get good. So tons of roster spots open up to sign free agents, tons of money. I'm actually pretty excited for this team. Uh, obviously, Larkin here, we need to lock up long term. He wants 4.9 for two years, um, then he gets to five for three. So I mean, might as well do two years here. See if he takes like 4.75. That's our window anyway. He seems to want the bridge. Uh, Richardson's 33.76, so gonna let him go. Definitely moving on from him. Uh, Dauphin's still like decent. Might as well keep him around for like the AHL. Maybe he can be like a fourth line center next year. Um, no one else there is worth signing for centers. Uh, left wing here, Domi wants a new deal. Hopefully not too much. Four million for 82. Seems expensive, even at 3.8 for one year, wow. I don't know, I mean, we have the money, it's just, that's what like a free agent would want, not an RFA. So, I'm going to offer him one year, 3.5. Um, it seems, honestly, still too pricey. I'm being really cheap, but you never know who's available in free agency. Uh, all the right wings are locked up. Carlson here, medium bottom six. We need somebody to play in the AHL, so might as well keep them. Uh, the rest of the guys, they're unsigned and not worth signing. Ekman Larson there is still locked up. Uh, Chitron only actually has one more year. Dallin obviously is going to make the team right out of camp, so give him the max contract. Uh, Shen, 78. Could be the bottom pair. 2 million though for 78. Never mind. Usually you can get those guys for like 2 way deal, like max 2 way deals. Connaughton here also wants way too much money for 77. I know they were in the NHL, but like they don't really have the NHL rating. The uh, rest of those guys aren't worth signing. We actually have 20 contract spots now. It's insane. Uh, this goalie here was okay in the AHL. I'll probably keep him. He, he wants like no money, might as well. I uh, wouldn't actually mind like getting rid of the hill, but he only has one year left. So we're going to have, even after like signing Larkin and Domi, so much money, so many roster spots. This should be crazy. All right, guys, let's open up free agency and look who's available. John Tavares said no to the Islanders and our Ducks sim, he re-signed with them, but he is available. We have 30 million in cap space. We can pay him whatever it costs. This would be huge. So... He wants five years, he gets more expensive somehow at other years, so I mean we'll give him, he wants a five year deal, we'll give him the five year deal. We have so much money, like I'm just going to go above and beyond everyone else. If there's a team that's willing to go 10, I'm going to go, 11, I, I could go 12 and it really not matter, we have so much money. Because we're bad, or we actually we're not even that bad, we made the playoffs last year. I feel like 11 million should be solid, I don't know, 11.1 maybe, just the extra 100k. And we'll go 11 million right on, I feel like that should get him. Uh, we're outpaying every single team by like two and a half million or just about. Um, and still we have so much cap space. Like that alone, that's a huge move for us. Uh, Vander Kane's also available. Uh, we can sign him. Like the amount of money we have is just insane. Uh, let's see, 6.2 for two years. So that's actually kind of perfect. We'll do uh, 6.5. Now we do have a bunch of guys that like their contract, their rookie contracts expire in two years. And we'll have to re-sign them for more money. But... Uh, still, like, outside of those two, Kovachuk's 35 and 85. I'd rather go with Evander Kane. 
Ryan Strom's an RFA. So that's really not going to help us. Also, guys, I'm looking at goalies here in laners are free agents. So 26, 83, medium starter. He can still grow. If we play well this year, he could grow quite a bit. So three and a half for two years for him. I think that's fair. Um, no other teams are interested. Saros, I would definitely like as the backup. 23-81. Uh, still has time to grow. Um, we'll have to give up a pick for this. I'm not sure what it would cost. Let's see. 1.25. This year's third. I'm more than happy with that. I'm guessing the Preds are like right up against the salary cap, and that's why they can't match it. I'm um, not entirely sure. And I want to try signing a couple defensemen here to play on the bottom pair. So I'm thinking Johnson and Cole as they're cheaper. DeHaan's same rating, but he's more money. Probably just because he's uh, younger so I would like them at one year deals just because I don't know what's gonna happen uh, for one year He wants 4.5 um, I mean we have the cap space. I would do one year at 4.2 if I don't get them I really don't care. No one else is interested uh, Cole here wants three years. We'll see what he wants for one Okay, so we could just do what exactly what he wants there for one year and maybe Toronto's give him enough uh, Nick Ritchie's also here, but for an RFA uh, 3.8 million you have to go up a first and a third uh, so I'd like him, but not going to do that. So maybe I try and trade for him. Same with Ryan Strom. I uh, would also like him, but not at the price of a first and a third. I just sorted all the skaters by potential. As you can see here, Pumple's available, 2577. Uh, he wants 1 million there for two years. I would definitely be okay with that. No picks. Um, worst case, he's like a good player in the AHL. Hartman's also available. Uh, he wants 1.1 there for two years. I'm guessing, again, Preds don't have the cap. And Hartman's got low top six, so that could actually be a steal if they just can't match it. Polak here is available as well, 23.77, wants 1.1. If he agrees to 1.1, again, we don't have to give up any picks. So these are just teams that don't have the salary cap, and we're kind of taking advantage of that. Uh, Tom Wilson here is also an RFA, so Washington probably can't keep him. We'll see if uh, he'll, he'll take this 1.15, no picks. Also, I see that Hallinan's still available for a free agent goalie. Fringe starting potential, 19. Uh, might as well sign him. So as you guys can see there, Hallinan accepted our offer. Still waiting to hear back from Tavares. Hopefully he accepts. I gave him so much more money. Laner accepts. We got our new starting goalie. Uh, Jack Johnson accepts. We get our bottom pair D. Cole rejected that one with the Leafs. That's okay. I did see they were interested. Uh, Hartman accepted as of now. So that's awesome. Hopefully Preds don't have the money. Saros rejected our offer. I'm guessing he signed with the Preds. So that probably means there's a good chance we actually do get Hartman. Uh, Pulak accepted as well as of right now. All these guys too that are RFAs. We didn't have to give up any picks for uh, Wilson rejected though, staying with the Capitals. Pumple accepted as of now. Um, still though, need to hear back from Tavares and Kane before I decide what else to do. Um, Hartman's been resolved. The Predators chose not to match. That's awesome. Low top six for free. They go up a first. There we go. John Tavares accepts the offer. Humbled by the lucrative contract. And we could have given him more. So I'm glad I didn't give him 12. Kane also accepted. So we get the two best free agents. Uh, okay, so... The Islanders matched the offer to Pulak. I assumed that would happen, but still, uh, we've had a pretty good free agency so far. And now, guys, making an offer on Hutton to be our backup. Or I guess he kind of split games with Laner. Both are 83, so uh, we'll see how this works out. I mean, that's kind of what we had at the beginning of last season. There's no starter available yet. And he definitely, I think, could trade one if they're at decent value. So we'll see if he takes 2 million here for three years. I think that's pretty fair for an 83. And right now, guys, trying to make a small trade with Buffalo, trading them Martinuk and Cousins for their third rounder in 2019. Uh, both of them aren't good enough to make our, like, top 12 forwards and they're both making you know a bit of money so i'd rather have that three million even if we don't end up using it we'll see what buffalo says and they accept it so awesome trade so right now guys trying to make another trade this one's with the oilers to get ryan strom i figure we already have dylan strom why not add his brother could play center could play wing offering them noel here uh low top six four potential we got him in the fourth so if we can turn a fourth into ryan strom that'd be amazing value is pretty even strom's on the block because they can't afford him let's see what they say Trade rejected, okay. Let's see if we can maybe add like something small. I was thinking maybe Winquist here. I think we got him in the seventh. Valley's on our side for sure now. And they accept that. So a seventh and a fourth essentially for Ryan Strom. That's awesome. So right there in the summer now, guys, I noticed I still need a sixth defenseman, and all the ones in free agency are pretty bad. So I'm trying to get Brandon Montour from the Ducks. We actually could use a right-handed D-man. 24 years old, 82 overall, so he's young, he's solid, has potential. 3.2 million for the next two years is a pretty solid contract as well. Uh, Nick Ritchie, they still can't afford to sign, so you could try and get him for like pennies on the dollar. Similar to what we did with Ryan Strom. So I'm offering them Kraus here. He's actually like our 12th best forward, decent amount of value. Ritchie's essentially an upgrade on him. Uh, Panic here is like our 13th best, overpaid, so I'm just moving the salary essentially. And then Alexis Gravel here, obviously we drafted, but he's never going to get good enough to help us. Has the value to hopefully put this trade over the edge. We get two really solid pieces back. Actually save a bit of money, I think, or it'll cost more once you sign Ritchie, but still... I think it's a good trade. We'll see uh, what do the Ducks say. 
Trade accepted, we're calling up Dauphin, so that's awesome. So after all those trades and signings, here's a look at the team going into next season. Honestly, pretty crazy to see like what this team's turned into after just one year. First line here, we have Vander Kane, John Tavares, Clayton Keller. That's a sick first line. Uh, second line there, we have Perlini, Larkin, and Richie. Third is Max Domi, Dylan Strom, and Ryan Strom. Obviously, have to have the two brothers together. And then fourth line here, we have Christian Fisher, Christian Dvorak, and Ryan Hartman. So I mean... That forward group is stacked. That's like one of the best forward groups I've ever had, I think, especially after like one year of working on a team. Defense here, Ekman Larson, Montour is the top pair. Dallin and Trisha on the second pair, hopefully getting that extra ice time. Both of them can grow. I mean, Dallin's got medium franchise. I feel like he's got to grow. And then bottom pair there, Johnson and Damaris. So defense could be a bit better, but I mean, if these two grow, then it's, you know, more than capable. And then, of course, goalies, we have the tandem there of Laner and Hutton. Uh, hopefully that'll work out. I mean, I think the team in front of them is good enough. This team's so much better than last year's team, and somehow last year's team made the playoffs, so I guess we'll see. AHL, I'm really just hoping Abramov, Dauphin, Merkley, uh, a couple other guys grow, McGinnis, Steenbergen. Don't think we have anything on defense or goalie, though, so we'll start simming, guys, and uh, hope for the best. So we're now a couple weeks away from the trade deadline. Vegas just offered me Schmidt for a second. I'd rather hold on to the second round pick, especially because I like our top six. Uh, until, of course, I have to trade Demers to uh, free up some cap space. But right now, you can see we're killing it. 34, 21, and 6. Uh, really liking the record right now. Uh, two of you guys forgot. We actually are only able to make one trade at the deadline. It's already made four this year, uh, which kind of sucks. Hopefully, we can make a very impactful single trade. And we're currently second place in the division here at the deadline with 74 points. Um, Edmonton's eight ahead of us there with 82. Tavares, our leading scorer, 63 points there in 64 games. So just under a point per game. Uh, we'll see what's out there. Again, we can only make one trade, so we'll have to make a count. Looking through the trading block, I've seen that Buffalo has Pommenville up for grabs. Still a pretty solid player. 36 years old, 82 overall. Roll there, second line forward. He'll play like third or fourth for us. Uh, he does have good poise though, 85, which is huge for the playoffs. Um, doesn't cost too much either. Giving up Robertson is like a decent prospect. A third and a seventh in this year's draft. Hopefully they'll say yes. Um, trade is accepted, so that's awesome. Just notice too, Buffalo is still doing pretty bad there. 18, 36, and 7. They can never get things right over there. I also want to show this to you guys. When the season started, we were considered hopeful. So we went from a rebuilder to hopeful. Now we're considered a contender. Uh, this team is definitely playing awesome. Uh, especially to like with the addition of Pommenville. Look at this. Like this team is so stacked. Richie's an 85 now. Don't know why he got dropped down there. I um, like the Strom connection just to like make our lines balanced. I mean, look how stacked that is. Like how any team is going to match up with us. I have no idea. Um, defense here, I think down only went up by one. I'm still going to keep him on the second, same with Chitrin. Hopefully they can grow a bit for us. And then even though both Hutton and Laner are 83s, they're actually doing decent here as a tandem. So uh, we'll get to the playoffs and see if the Sim's good to us. So we're now at the end of the regular season. Finish with a record of 44, 32, and 6. I am a little worried here. That adds up to 94 points. Uh, looks like we went around 500 since the deadline. 94 should be good enough to get the playoffs, but... I don't know, you never know this game. If we missed with this team and made it last year with that team, that's just ridiculous. Oh no, okay, we're good. So second place in the division, I was worried. Uh, Tavares there, 81 points, 82 games, basically a point per game season. Awesome to see that. We'll see how everyone else did as well. Maybe we had a bit of extra growth there the last month or two. Keller, 73 points. He's definitely got to get a boost this offseason. Uh, Larkin, 68. Kane there, 61. Like, this team's unreal. Ekman Larson, 61 as a D-man. Even Strom there putting up 45 on the third line. Perlini with 43. Uh, Pommenville, I think he's playing, like, fourth line for us. It's the, probably the best fourth line in the league. So, I mean, yeah, like, everyone on this team is just contributing. I love seeing that. Uh, we'll see how the goalies did here as well. So, basically, um, equal amount of games played. That does not add up to 82 games played, so not sure what's going on there. Maybe, like, they count a game if you get subbed in or whatever. Uh, pretty much equal shutouts. Save percentage. Hutton's a little bit better. Same with goals again. So I guess Hutton is the better goalie here. Uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, the leading scorers for every single team now. Malcolm looks to be locking with the Art Ross this year, at least uh, potentially. McDavid's one point behind. They both have a game left, so that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Then Kane, Tarasenko, Kolachuk had 87 points for the Stars. And he's actually down in overall to an 83. That's really strange. I'm guessing they had him on a line with like Sagan and Ben. Uh, Drew there did a really uh, good season. Line A, Kucherov, Crosby. And there's Tavares. So we finally have a guy on the first page. Uh, that's awesome. So the first round of the playoffs, guys, are going up against the Vancouver Canucks. Here's a look at their team. Uh, they still got the BBB as the first line. Barchi, Horvat, and Besser. Uh, second line there is pretty rough. Same with the third and the fourth. Like our forward group is so much better. Um, even defense. We have much better defense. I'm not sure who the goalie is going to be. It's Markstrom, so Demko hasn't made it yet. I mean, we really should beat these guys. Um, actually, wait, I think was Laner the starter there? Because Hutton had better stats all throughout the year. I want to make sure 
Um, Hutton's getting a start here in the first playoff game. So hopefully uh, we can get by the first round this time. So here we go, guys. First game, 2-1 loss. Oh, no. 3-1 win, so it's 1-1. 3-2, one, one. we're up 2. There we go. So uh, beat them, actually, uh, in five games after losing that first game. Close game, 2-1. Uh, win four straight, moving on to the semifinals. And in the second round, guys, we're going up against the Dallas Stars. Look at the beard Tavares is rocking. I don't think I've ever seen him rock that much of a beard. Uh, granted, I don't think he's ever made it out of the first round, so um, maybe that's why I've never seen it. Uh, so taking a look at the Dallas Stars roster, yeah, that first line I was right. Ben Sagan and Kovachuk. Then they got Radulov, Spezza, Yanmark. They're bottom six. Nowhere near as good as ours. Defense, basically just led by Klingberg there. He's like there, Ekman Larson. Um, and then the rest of the top five, actually, or the rest of like, the five other defensemen they have are all worse than ours. Uh, goalie, though, Bishop is, you know, better than our two goalies. So we'll see what happens. So here we go, guys. Round two. 4-3 OT win the first game. 1-1. One, 2-1. One, one. Uh, okay, so oh, we just won. Okay, that was so fast. Lost the fourth game in OT, which made it 2-2. Two, two. And then we won the next two games, winning that in six. Now we're going up against the Chicago Blackhawks in the conference final. I figured I could also show you guys the ratings here. Blackhawks, 94-90-90. We have 96, 91, 88, so plus two offense, plus one D, minus two goalie, but you know, maybe our goalies are always rested, which is a good help. Kane there rocking, not much of a beard, especially compared to Tavares. So I guess, too, they still have Mantha, as he was never in uh, free agency. Uh, really interested to see, actually, what their team looks like. So yeah, Mantha, Taze, Kane, just their three best players on the first line. I respect that. Uh, Duclair, obviously we traded away, or, you know, Chica did to Chicago. Debrinkat, Sod, so solid second line and third line, too. Uh, fourth line's not too great, but I mean, they do have be the best forward depth that we've faced so far. Keith Seabrook, and then really nothing on D. Like, they have a 75 there. Um, and Dalstrom on the bottom pair with Austerly. So, hopefully, we can take advantage of that third pair, score all our goals against them. And then Crawford there, their starter, now an 87. So, I think he's actually gone down a bit. Uh, this is going to be a good series, and uh, hopefully, we can get by and make it to the Stanley Cup final. Here we go, guys. Start the conference final. 4 2 win in the first game. Now it's 1 1. Lost the third game as well. Tied it up 2 2. Um, there we go, 5-4 OT win in the 5th game, and a 3-1 win in the 6th game. Moving on to the Stanley Cup Final, we're actually playing the Carolina Hurricanes. This would without a doubt be like the least viewed Stanley Cup Final ever. Uh, two non-traditional hockey markets, two teams that have been like associated with a lot of relocation. Um, so we'll see what Carolina's team is looking like, as well as who is their goalie. Like if they have Darling, I'd be very surprised. It looks like they still do, based on the 85 goaltender rating, 93 offense, 94 D. So they actually have... Three worse offense. Our offense is up. Our guys are killing it. Uh, but three better D. So, I mean, that works out pretty well. Our goaltender, though, uh, three higher. That's our first time we've had a matchup where our goalies are better. So, here we go. Stanley Cup final. One series away. So, who's up in rating? Um, our offense is supposed to be better. I don't really see any... Uh, it looks the same to me. Defense. Down's down 81. So, maybe that's what did it. Uh, he's obviously growing. He's got that franchise potential. Goalies there are both 83 still, so I'm not sure, but we somehow got a plus two offense. Darling and Ward, 81 and 80. Okay, we gotta light these goalies up. Our offense is so stacked. Their offense is solid, like it's got good depth like us, but ours is better. Defense though, their defense, that is a nasty top six. I will give them that. So, I mean, as long as we can outplay those forwards and score on those goalies, we should be able to win the Stanley Cup. So for the cup here, guys, I'm gonna sim period by period. Uh, just, you know, make it a little more nerve-wracking. First game here, first period. Let's see what's going on. And it's 0-0 after the first. Second period, still 0-0. And there we go. Dvorak and Kane each score in the third. Rask scores for them. We come away, though, with a 2-1 win. So there we go. That first first game is huge. And that was actually at home as well. So we're a higher seed than Carolina. Uh, we finished second. I think, you know, Carolina is a Metro team. And I think that all five, or there was five Metro teams and only three um, Atlantic teams when I was looking at it. Here we go. Kane and Larkin opening up the scoring in the first. 2 nothing. Stroman Tavares, we are rolling. Lindholm gets one. Does not matter. 4-1 win. Two games to zero. We are two wins away here from the Stanley Cup in year two of the Arizona Coyotes. Like, that offseason we had was just unreal. So, game number three in Carolina. Going to be a little bit tougher, but I think the boys got this. Um, Stahl and Dadnov. Okay, so they made a trade there for Dadnov. I didn't even notice that, actually, on their forward group. Stahl again. Wow. Okay, so, you know, they get a win there at home. It's still 2-1 lead for us. Not too worried. Game number four here. This is honestly a pivotal game. Either we go up 3-1 or it's all tied up. Here we go. Um, Dvorak and Larkin showing up for us this game. Strom, Rass, so 3-1 now. And Fisher there just ices that one or, you know, <laughs> puts it away, I guess. I'm not sure what I was going for there. 
So 3-1 series lead. This could be the next game. We could win it in Arizona in game five. That would be insane. So here we go. Hopefully we can pull this out. This team's stacked. First period. Uh, Kane and Ekman Larson both score up to nothing. Second period. Uh, wow, Teravine and Skinner. Okay, so we'll resume simulation here. Increase sim speed eight times. 2-2 two -two game. They're out shooting us too. Okay, we need the boys to answer back. They had a solid first period. It looks like, imagine OT here to win it in OT. Eight and a half minutes, seven and a half, six minutes. Dadnov, no way. 3-2. He's keeping Carolina's hopes alive. There's still time though to force this thing to OT. One minute, Slavin, okay. Probably looks like an empty netter there. So, no Game 5 uh, Stanley Cup win, but that's all right. We still have two more games here to try and put this thing away. Game number six, first period, uh, no scores. Second period, Lindholm scores for them. Are you kidding me? All right, we'll resume simulation here. Come on, we need some uh, Skinner. Now it's 2 nothing. Still lots of time, though. Basically an entire period. We have a power play. Nothing on it, though. Come on. Can't get shut out here in game six. We gotta show up here, boys. Come on. This team is stacked. Terravine in no way. Five minutes left, down three nothing. I don't see it happening. Alright, so we just lost back to back games. Going into game seven of the Stanley Cup final against the Hurricanes. <sighs> okay, here we go. Have to win this thing to win the Stanley Cup. So this is it, guys. Game seven Stanley Cup finals. We need a win. First period. Palmville scores, there you go, the trade deadline acquisition, we're up 1-0, second period, no scores, alright, we'll resume simulation here, need to hold on to this one cool lead as I say that, Paul Stastny scores, okay, 1-1, one, one. the rest of the third period to go, we need a hero, John Tavares, Clayton Keller, Dylan Larkin, somebody's got to step up here, about 5 minutes left, shots are pretty much equal, Dvorak, there we go, the fourth liner, I love it, one minute to go, up by one. Hopefully they can hold on to this. There's a minute left in the game here, guys. I'm not playing. I'm just watching this thing uh, unfold. 2-1 lead here for the Coyotes. Hopefully they can hold on to this. Um, Ryan almost scores one. I think that's a huge save from Hutton, though. Carolina's pulling their goalie. 40 seconds left. All we need here is an empty netter. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, no. Tipped goal or something, but it's waved off. Oh my gosh, imagine a no goal in like game seven, still like a final minute to go. Is that goal interference? <laughs> this is hilarious. Imagine if this actually happened. Yeah, it looks like Ryan might have been in the blue ice. I'm not sure. Larkin was standing right there. Doesn't look too happy. And it's a no goal. That is, that is huge. Imagine the balls on a ref to say no goal. 38 seconds left. Game seven, still like a final. Down one, like the game time. That's insane. Carolina's pushing now. They gave it to Dadnov. He's been a bit of a uh, pest for us. Hutton, though, big save there. Less than 30 to go. This is what we play for, boys. Up one, 30 seconds to go. That almost uh, tied it up. If that was on net, uh, Hutton was way too low there. Keller to Kane. Ah, oh, big block on the empty netter. 16 seconds. Pesci, I don't know who that was. Can't control it. Kane's, or Keller's got it. I don't know who that was too, but that is it. I think that was out to Kane. Yeah, it was to Kane. Seals the deal, 3-1, 12 seconds to go. Arizona is going to be a Stanley Cup champion in year two of the rebuild. That's insane. And there we go, guys. Stanley Cup champion, Arizona Coyotes. I can't believe that. I thought, like, you know, maybe this team could win it in that third year. So, like, the 2020 Cup. Uh, the fact they pulled this off, 2019 Stanley Cup champions. Um, that is insane. I mean, that forward depth also really helped us. Like, I think half those players are still on rookie contracts. And obviously, too, we had all that money in the free agency. Able to sign Tavares, Kane, trade for RFAs. Other teams couldn't sign. Uh, definitely worked out well for us. Dallin was stepping up there. Not sure actually what his rating is. I'm sure a bunch of these guys are going to be so much higher rated now after a great playoff run. And a bunch of them need new deals. So if we didn't win here, we actually might have had to trade guys away. Uh, to keep under the salary cap. I know Dave Boland's contract was off. Probably could have traded Demers, but doesn't matter. We got it in the second year. Uh, that's awesome. And Clayton Keller is actually the winner of the Conn Smythe. Uh, 26 points there. I think we had around 25 games played. So he averaged a point per game. That's awesome. Uh, love seeing Clayton Keller get that. I mean, put him on the thumbnail. Gets the Conn Smythe in our Stanley Cup winning season. And there is the cup coming out. Ekman Larson's going to go grab that for us. Get the team pick. And there he goes, Ekman Larson shaking, I guess, the knockoff Kerry Bettman hand. Yeah, give me that cup. There we go. I can't believe it. That is awesome. 
Who's he going to give it to first, though? Is he going to give it to Larkin, the big trade we made? I mean, Larkin kind of carried the team first year. Who is that actually getting it? Is that Chitrin? I can't tell. Number eight. Um, Johnson. Okay. I respect that. That doesn't really look like Jack Johnson, but I'll forgive it as we won the Stanley Cup, so who cares? Uh, I've seen Dallin out there, too. There's Max Domi, 26. Who's that there? There's Dallin. The rookie, the first overall pick, third to get the cup. Love that. And finally, here we have the Stanley Cup pick. I like how a lot of the names are. I like. And finally, here we have the Stanley Cup pick. I like how a lot of the faces are recognizable. You can see Ekman Larson, Tavares, Kane, Larkin there. Uh, just a lot of faces, like even the Strom brothers. So there we go, guys. Stanley Cup champions. Game seven. I love it. And this is pretty funny, guys. Draft Lawyer results just came in. Vegas with the first overall pick via the LA Kings. That has to hurt. As well, they got six via Toronto. I mean, Vegas is making some moves. And here's a look at the awards. Obviously, Arizona Coyotes, Stanley Cup champions. Uh, Pittsburgh there won the President's Trophy. So player awards here. McDavid with Yard Ross. He did beat out Malkin. Uh, Malkin, though, got the heart. Clefbaum, James Norris. McDavid, Lady Bing. Calder then went to Tyson Jost. Uh, Keller with the Con Smythe. Uh, we already knew that. Uh, Murray with the Vesna and the William M. Jennings. Mathot there with the uh, Masterson. Bergeron with the Selkie. Malkin with the Ted Lindsay. And then Kane then Reese Richard. So we got the two trophies that matter most, the Stanley Cup and the Conn Smythe. And right here's look at our team's playoff stats. Clayton Keller there at 26 points in 24 games. Now an 86 overall, so he's a beast. I think too his contract's up. Yeah, it is. So he's gonna want to raise. Tavares there, point per game, 24 and 24. Kane obviously clutch with the empty netter. Ekman Larson did well. Uh, same with Dylan Strom there. Domi. I mean, the whole team looks to have played pretty well in those playoffs. So uh, really happy with how that turned out. I still can't believe we got it in the second year. They even have to go to three. Uh, we'll see here who Carolina beat to play us. So Pittsburgh in five, Devils there in seven, Lightning in seven. Lightning were one game away from uh, making it to the Stanley Cup final in back-to-back -back years. And then you can see there, lost to us in seven. So I mean, Carolina stayed in tough, like three, seven game series, but um, we were just too good a team. So I was just seeing through the draft guys and as you can see, Detroit got Caulfield at seven. Vegas got both Doc and Kako with the five and six picks. Uh, Buffalo here got Cousins at four. Minnesota got Byram at three. Colorado got Jack Hughes at two. So, I mean, they're going to be absolutely stacked now. And look at this. Vegas already got Kako and Doc with the five and six pick. As well, they get Millman, some created player. 80 overall, medium franchise potential. I've never seen that before. Like, a guy in the draft have franchise potential. That's a skater. It's always a goalie, and it almost never happens. First overall 2019, 80 overall to the draft, medium franchise, along with Kako and Dodge. Like, if I was to keep this franchise mode going, Vegas would be so stacked. That's just insane. And now, guys, we get to open up this Trader's Choice pack and actually keep it as somehow we're able to win the Stanley Cup with the Arizona Coyotes in year number two. I still honestly can't believe that. So, first round here, it's just quick sell, doesn't matter who we get. So, I'll uh, we'll take Bishop and Palat here. We'd love to get, like, one of the hot stars uh, for the third round there, the 87+. plus. Uh, second round here, I guess we'll go Eichel and Rene again. I mean, maybe those two guys are just over Quicksell, like we can get a thousand for them, but that would be about it. This is the round that matters. Ruby Pashnak's pretty solid. Petrangelo there, Jamie Benn, uh, Ruby Couturier's okay, and then Ruby Krug. So, uh, could have been better. We'll go Couturier and Pashnak, I think. Those are probably the best two. So, even if we couldn't keep that, wouldn't have been the end of the world, but still... Um, obviously, we prefer to keep it than quick sell it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave the thumbs up. If you have any ideas, guys, for future episodes of this series, let me know in the comments section. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.